if you are interested on open source intelligence, searching surface web is the most important topic. Over searching the web, we could find a lot of useful information. So I will present searching surface web activity in two recordings. In the first recording, I discuss a little bit of theory and kind of advanced search options. Later on, in the second video, I will do the demonstration. As you may aware, in the internet, we can see three types of webs. Surface web, deep web, and dark web. The tiny part of the web is actually the surface web, even though we think that is massive. So the massive component of the web categorized under deep web. Deep web can be accessed after some authorization. Surface web is the public pages. Anyone can visit, anyone can access. Then there is a component of the web called it as dark web. We have no idea about it. And there are size and the information available. But people guess size of the dark web is really larger than the surface web. Most of the open source activities actually refer in the surface web, but nowadays there are tools which we can move on to the deep and dark web to find the intelligent information. The idea of the lecture today actually to discuss surface web, searching on the surface web. Search on the web, surface, dark or deep, doesn't matter, comes under the area of information retrieval. So we have a huge set of information available in front of our computer via the internet. How do you retrieve the correct information from those millions of, or trillions of websites. That is a problem from the beginning of the internet, still right now. Some of the people introduced few algorithms and created big companies out of that. Researchers are still doing research to locate best zone or to be kind of find best known methods to retrieve the correct information based on the user needs. <laughs> Nowadays, searching is the most popular activity which people do with the computer. Like you. at the beginning of computers, maybe in 80s, people do a lot of office work with the computer. Now people do a lot of searching on the computer. They search for information. So there should be a way to retrieve the information. So in order to provide the searching service to the end users, as you know they are, there are hundreds of search engines available in the world. 
those search engines, some of them are very popular and multi-trillion companies. Some of them are not so popular, but good. Better than those popular companies sometimes. If you are interested in open source intelligence, you should be capable, you should have a capability to handle all those search engines. Because any of those search engines may not give you the perfect answer. The answers or the information they might provide you based on your search is a probability result. The result you get right now may, may not accurate tomorrow or maybe search engine X might give the better results than search engine Y. Basically, the architecture of search engine determined by two requirements. That is their effectiveness and efficiency of searching. Effectiveness discussed on the quality of the results they produce. Efficiency focus on the time they usually take to produce this result. Quality of the results only all, always very relative to the first. So for example, if I say something, I might get some results that I may feel not really the information I expected. For the same search query, some other people might think the result they receive is kind of but they expect so it's very relative and ambiguous. So the other thing is, when you do search on the search engines, you might get first 10 or 20 base match pages. So very small percentage of the people of very this number of people will go to find the next page, next search results. If your kind of websites or the information not appears on the first set, so that may not get attention on the searches. But if you are looking for, if you are using search engines, in the area of open source intelligence, you should not restrict yourself to the first set of results because you are the expert wants intelligence. So if you restrict to the first page, the search engine becomes the expert and you kind of believe the search engines gives you the intelligence. No, you should use search engines as a tool to retrieve the information. So you have to remember you have you are the who are looking for information or the intelligence. In order to understand how do you efficiently search surface web. First of all, you should understand how those search engines work. Search engines depends on their indexing process. So they index or they try to index the internet or the surface web in their huge index databases. So their indexing process starts with what we call it, what we call it as crawling. Search engines owns their own crawlers. So the, these crawlers 
retrieve web pages, extract keywords, links, and process those pages and put them into the indexes, in their indexes. Indexing process basically is a combination of text acquisition information retrieval, text acquisition from online documents, including emails, web pages, newsletters, social network websites, and so on. After that, text transformation that transfer the data which retrieve to a kind of meaningful formats and then creation of indexes. As you may understood, since we have trillions of documents interconnected to the surface web, so indexing those documents in an efficient way is not simple task. As I mentioned, in order to do indexing, first of all, we need to acquire the test, and then we have to transform this test, and then we can create the indexes. Text acquisition identify and store the documents retrieved from the web for indexing. After that, this text will transform into their features, which expected in the indexing process, which require in the indexing process. So then, indexing process will create proper indexes and store those in the search engine databases. Then search engine provide a simple interface to end users like you and me. So then end users like you and me type our search queries to this interface. So those queries retrieves the matching results from the index databases and rank them based on their ranking algorithm and then present to the end user. So then the end user can retrieve those documents from the document storage of the search engines or directly from the web if it is still online available. The results produced by the search engine, they may automatically evaluate. Sometimes it's evaluated by the users, like if you click the results and then that means the indication that you retrieve the expected results. If you go to the next page, how to retrieve the first, that might be an indication that you may not get the expected results in the first set. So users also indirectly contribute to the evaluation, but search engine also evaluate what they produce on the go. In the search engines, ranking is the most important process because they try to produce the best set of results to you in the first hit. So when you go to this querying process, as I mentioned, use interaction, ranking, and evaluation are the main thing, three main things. Use interaction basically we they provide simple query language and querying parameters and advanced parameters. So some of us actually knows to interact the search engines in the simple forms. So idea of this lecture today is to show you how to interact with the search engine in more advanced forms. As an expert of open source intelligence, so you should know how to do that.
so even you are not a person who interests on intelligence that is still interaction of the search engine is important because that led you to find the correct accurate information on the surface web so you must know how to properly interact with those tools the tool is the search engine so i do a detailed demo on that in my second part of this lecture each search engine as i said has their own ranking algorithms the ranking algorithms prioritize the list of indexes which created on your keywords so this prioritization is very important as i said so users affected the correct accurate results in the first hit the evaluation process usually happens offline by the search engines to analyze whether they have produced the correct results to those old searches so based on this the evaluation they always try to improve their ranking algorithms as i mentioned the main part of the searching is the text exploitation so there should be a tool to acquire text acquire the information and then extract text from the surface web so those text exploitation usually handled by the software acquired as crawlers or web crawlers in short those crawlers automatically retrieve the online web pages and then from those pages they are trying to find out links and then they follow the links and retrieve the next set of pages and so on so they spied it well to find the information so those crawlers are really complicated crawlers right now they process massive set of information dynamically and they try to keep freshness of the pages they visit some pages which are updated regularly they must visit those pages regularly if those pages are static and not updated regularly they may not visit those regularly so so those information and the intuition how to crawl when to crawl is tied of implement into a web crawl engines right now so the crawlers play the major role in the first step of the search when they crawl as you may understood let's say starting from some page they might be see three different pages so that might have links to each other so those links we usually call it as in links and out links so for example this has some reference to this website so this is in link to this website so this website basically have one in link from this so when we consider this particular website it has the in link in link with this and so on so as you may understood so those websites link each other the crawler while crawling the web should mark and usually they record those references or links in between each other so they must do that to stop infinite loops they may get into 
while crude. Theoretically speaking, if the crawler comes into your web website to retrieve the information, they can retrieve entire content which is published on the web route. Some of this information may already link to your main web page, but some of them are maybe still not linked to the web page, but still in the main directory. But the code is possible to take all the pages linked into your page, other pages, plus any other information available under your website. But sometimes you may not wish to index some of the content of your website. And otherwise you may not want the crawlers or the search engines to put, the, put your content into the public domain. If you do so, so there is a technique called as, or there is a method to tell the crawler, don't index some content. The method we use is TST file. So in your website, in the root directory, you can put a file called robots.txt. In this robots.txt files, you can let the words know whether you allow the crawlers to come in and which directories you allow and which directories you are not allowing the crawlers to index in. So most of the crawlers honor the description in the robot.txt file. But as you may understood, so if anything in the web or the under root directory, anyone can retrieve. So if some crawler, if they would, they can just ignore robots.txt file and query what they want or to index what they want. But as I mentioned, most of the crawlers usually respect robots.txt file. When they re start retrieving the information actually from the robots.txt, so then based on the rules, Defining this robots TST, they will start indexing your page. If they say disallow some directories, so they may not index those. But if you have not include this robots TST into your website, then scholars will index everything. In case if you by mistake if you put some confidential data under the web root, or if you temporarily put some data and remove later on for the purpose of sharing, so you have to be very careful. Because at the time they are in the public directories, that crawlers may already index them. And they may put already put those documents into docu their document databases. After the retrieving the trace the, uh, from the crawlers, so the search engines maintain the statistics about those documents. So keywords counts, word counts, number of links goes to outside pages, and so on. And then they will use some of the weighting algorithms to weight the efficiency of those things. So at the beginning, the weighting method is the combination of frequency of the phrase you search and inverse document frequency in the collection. If you search for some phrase, Usually, it's, it, the weight is something 
like how many times this phrase or words appears in doc this particular document. If some words appears more frequently in the document, search engines believe that's what you are searching. As you may understood, this kind of simple ranking may not affect you. So people start developing different ranking algorithms, scoring methods. So the ranking is the very core component of the search engine. People comes to a search engine if that search engine produces accurate results. So basic score assigned to a page by most of the search engine is the addition of what we call it as QI and DI. We multiply QI and DI and sum of them. That is kind of basic score. QI and DI is the Korean document term base for a term I. Kori is put by the users as we given a way, and the documents we have given some way. Then on the keywords appears in the query. So we create the sum of those. We multiply them together and get the sum to assign a score. So the high scores pages may appear first. So this fundamental Ranking concepts change by an innovative algorithm called PageRank. So that is the foundation of the best known company, Google. Founder of Google, Larry Page, uh, introduced the page ranking method, the algorithm name is page rank algorithm. So that algorithm used by Google from its start, still it used with some variations. Last year, in September, the old patent related to page rank was expired. That means, if someone wants, now this algorithm can be used in the applications. It's not belongs to Google anymore, it's a expired data. So usually you know patents are given for a period of 20 years. So in 1999, so kind of Google patent, this page rank algorithm. So now it, after 20 years, it expired. So not only Google, now if you want, you can use page rank algorithm and its variations and build your own tools to produce better results, better searching results. Let's try to understand the concepts behind the page rank algorithm. Page rank algorithms rank the page not based on the keywords appears on the text. Not only that keywords, but also based on the links. In other words, so they they create a count or a weight based on how many people are referring to you. So for example. When you do some query, that query might produce set of pages, which that your keyword 
exist. So among those pages, you need to find it out what are the best. So they pick the most pages which refers by most of the other websites as the best page to rank first. So that's the basic concept in this page rank algorithm. So if you have a close look, how it works. So let's say there are three pages, A, B, C, which has similar keywords available. So now we want to rank those A, B, C. And in order to do that, we have to calculate the score for the pages. Let's say we want to find the page rank value of page C. According to this algorithm, that is a summation of all ranks, summation and kind of a probability of the pages which referring to, the probability of page ranks of the pages which referring to your page, in other words. So for example, so BU refer to the set of pages that point to a page U, it's your page, BU. Basically, V, it's each element of this sub set of BU. That means the pages referring to your page. Assume you have a page, there are a set of pages, BU, referring to your page. V is the element of each page. So we take each element of each page, that means we take each page which referring to your page and then calculate this. So what is this? This is, we take the page rank of each page, which is referring to, and divide by the ref links, outlinks in this page. So we take the page rank of each page and divide outlinks, how many links in this page. And that gives the average kind of weight to your page. So then we do summation of all such. That is the innovation did by Larry H. and the start of Google. So you see, it's a very simple so, and very innovative different way of looking at the ranking. So let's take example of our ABC now. So we have a page C. It has one linked page A. We have page A, it has two links, one to page B and one to page C. When you take page B, it has a one link page C, right. So we, if you want to calculate the page rank of C, is the kind of, that is a page rank of A divided by two, because A has two outlinks, plus page rank of B divided by one, because B has only one outlink, outlink. So, so that is your rank. So, in this example, as assume page C is referred by only page A and B. So that's how Google rank pages, and that's how Google create accurate results. So this algorithm further tunes by Google, and I guess still they are using it. After the ranking, the most other important thing is querying. So we need to have an efficient way of querying, input what we want to into the search engines. 
So we cannot use like SQL. So obviously, if you want to retrieve the information from databases, we use SQL. Similarly, if you want to retrieve information from search engines, we want to have some Korean languages. Some people start developing such Korean languages, but most of the time, what we do is we just enter some keywords. As the people who retrieve the information, we should be aware how to pass these queries, how to pass these inputs into the search engines. That's what we're going to discuss next. How do you efficiently query the information from the search engines? That's what we need in, to gather intelligence available in the open internet. So when you say search engines, so they, usually you focus on Google, maybe Yahoo. And one of the search engines getting popular nowadays is Yandex, some Russian company, which accurately or build better page ranks or European and Russian content. So Google is more like uh, international search engines. Obviously, being in Yahoo, managed to create such accurate results. Yandex also look at this ranking, I think, in a different way and create the results. In the focus of open source intelligence, the results produce Google and the Yandex. usually different. So you may get experience if you interest. So you have to search usually in different angles. So as experts on the OSIN. So in, in case you want to search on different angles, obviously you need to know how to pass queries to those search engines who look the world in different angles. In order to give you a feeling about it, I'll take Google and Yandex and execute some queries and show you the results in the second part of my video. In addition to the searching results or the text, sometimes searching devices, searching the history is important. If you want if you are doing intelligent gathering. So for that, Google may not fit in. For that, there are several different search engines, such as Sora, an archive, and many more. So these two lectures search on the content, not on the devices. So I'm only looking at Google and Yandex. In the Google, works not only as a search engine, if you want wish, you can use Google as a calculator as well. So this is just a start. So because most of you think Google is a search engine, so, but Google can do a lot of other things. They have a lot of other way of processing queries. So they understand plus minus multiplication, division like mathematical arithmetic operators. So if you want to kind of do simple calculation, just execute in this Google search button. Google will tell you the answer. You don't need a calculator. In case you want to find it out the time of the country at this moment, you can just ask the time. So we will understand that. 
if you want to convert some money to the other money so you just can try to convert the amount in euro to maybe say 300 euros in usd google will immediately tell how much it is so google works as a translator as well for the units as well as for the languages so because of that it's very nice osin tool or the most important osin tools in the world open source intelligent tool in the world that's what i believe so if you want to become a good searcher or the osin person you need to know how to run or how to interact or how to pass better queries to those tools like if you want to retrieve information from the database you should know sql similarly if you want to retrieve information from this huge internet you should know to build advanced search options or the search parameters so let's have a look on such important parameters one of the most important parameters is double quotes in case you want to search for entire phrase so you have to use double quotes so then google will return you the pages appears in appears this entire phrase otherwise it's just a oh, fresh if you just type few words google will find the pages appear any of these words and they rank them and present to you if you enter the phrase with the double quotes google will find the pages which has entire phrase and then rank it and present to you so it's double quotes is very important no correct then if you want to search some numbers into given periods you can use two dots so for example if you want to find it out some products which cost in between 100 rupees to 1000 you give a product name then say 100 double dot 2000 something like that so two periods or so double dot will replace the numbers from start to end and then search and then run asterisks also important search operator you can put some words and asterisks so it returns all variations of this word so with some examples i will show you the importance in the second video so in addition to these three basic operators there are several others so one is and so i said we will use default or to type several words usually it's or if you want to use and so you have to put and capital and in between the words so then google return the pages has those both words don't confuse with double quotes and then double quotes entire phrase should appear on the page as it is with the and it search whether these two words are appears using o you can run multiple terms to it so if there are two phrases for example within the double quotes we want to link together or we want to find either phrase pages available in the either phrase either phrase so then you type o in between so capital o is also important operator 
in case of person point of view, minus is and person in field most important operator. Okay. I'll show that in my demo as well. So when you run a query on a particular person, let's say, you get a result about this person, most popular person. Let's say I search for some name. So it gives, produce the results about that name. But the first, first ranks comes about the most popular person of this name. So I don't want to get the information of the popular person, but I am looking for someone else. So then I can remove that result using minus. So I'll show that how to use it in the second video. Minus operator excludes some events from your search query. Why do you want to exclude? You might understand. You might think if you want to exclude something, we just not type that. So that's what you think. That is not true. correct. So sometimes you must tell the search engine exclude this word using minus. And the tilt search query, search keywords, put in by tilt, you can get the similar words, results with the similar words. So that's also important because of that. There are plenty of other important search queries which gives you accurate, intelligent information. One is the site. So if you want to narrow down your search into a particular domain, you can use site and colon, double tap, and give a domain name. So for example, site colon.lk will produce the results of .lk websites, only from the .lk websites. In URL, it's also similar. With the in URL parameter, you can actually in URL, sorry, it's, 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 it's in URL parameter search keywords in the URL. So usually when you search a keyword, it's, it's produced the results based on the appearance of this keyword in the body, URL, or any other tags and things like that. It's a combination. But if you say in URL and set of keywords, so then your keyword must appear in the URLs of the document. So that also important for certain things I will show you. In title, we'll search only the titles of the documents. So if you want to produce some search based on the title of the state of humans, so then you can use in title. As you are aware, search engines index anything in the world, any document, in any, any form, pictures, office files, PDFs, or whatever, and so on, presentations. So if you want to limit your search query to a certain set of files, so you can use an operator called file type. So for example, let's say you are looking for PowerPoint presentations, then you can use file type colon PPTS. So if you are looking only for PDF documents, you can search for file type colon PDF, like that. So isn't it important? So you might not be aware of how Google can also produce their search. So if you want to search some documents in the history, like 20 years ago, so you can use before colon 2000. So it produced the history results, historical results. So if you can use before and after operators together to search for certain period. 
So, you know, OSIN requires such search. Google support it. So why not reuse them? Similarly, there are some operators in, available in the Google Korean syntax. Just to set, take, just to get some information. So for example, if you say define colon any words, it gives the definition of that word. You don't need to turn dictionaries to do so. Just if you don't know how to pronounce some words, if you don't know what is the definition of some words, you don't need to go for dictionaries. Now, you just type define colon, the word you are looking for, Google tells you what it is. Google tells you the meaning of it. Similarly, if you want to find the weather of any city, you type weather colon the city name or the zip code. Google tells you the present situation in that city. You want to know the time of a particular town? Type time colon and the town name, it tells you. the time. Similarly, Google can translate in between many languages, as you know. If you want to translate some words directly at the search prompt, type translate colon and the word you want to translate to the language. Then it tells the word. So this, this table provides you a basic summary of the advanced search parameters we discussed so far. Some of these advanced operators valid for the documents, some valid for images, and then others groups, news, and so on. Some only valid for documents, not for images like that. So for example, in title, operator works for any kind of document. All in title, the same. All in title mean all keywords you type need to be available in title of the page. In URL, and all in URL. In URL is not valid for group. All in URL is valid. It's not valid for news. The site operator works only for web pages and images, not for news. All in text operator works for any content, and file type operator works only for web and images, kind of types, only known set of types. Similarly, there are other operators like in subject, so and so, which I'm, I don't discuss as well in this class. So I have taken out Some important operators where we may helpful operators which helpful to gather the intelligent information. So let's take some examples, examples to understand what we discussed so far. Let's say we want to search on a leopards information about leopards in Yala to find out how many leopards kills in the area or how many leopards appears in the particular area in the Yala. So how do you run a query? So for example, if you type leopard on the Google search, you give billions of credits in leopards all over the world. So you are only interested on the leopards, stories on the leopards appears in different ways. Maybe photos of the leopards, maybe stories of leopard killed or leopard maybe found or whatever. Different variations. You can put leopard stuff. So then it tests the 
Rijas from any content refers to the letter from anywhere in the world. Right. Now you only want to find the information in Yala. So very simply you can use the keyword and for that. So you say leopard star and yala. So that produces only the results of leopard and yala. So that means some leopards related to the yala national park. Let's say you walk, further want to refine this query and want to get the results or you want to find the stories of leopard before 2010. So you can then you can use a keyword before Kuala Lumpur 2010. Then your first 10 hits of Google will be the stories about leopard in Yala before 2010. Okay. Similarly, let's say you want to find the person called Chatur. So you can type Chatur on the form. So you might get hundreds, thousands hits about different Chaturas. But if most popular Chatur in Sri Lanka, maybe let's say Chatur Senara, and you don't want to find it out about him, so then you type, you say you want to find Chatura not this Senara. So you then type Chatura minus Senara. And then you can get rid of this Chatura Senara in the Google. You want to get rid of Chatura Senara and then search for Chatura. So type Chatura minus Senara. So then you can find information about important papers. Okay, then you want to gather some information about murders in Sri Lanka. So you, you, you can type murder, then you get all the murder cases in all over the world. So in, in case you want to limit that to Sri Lanka, you type murder then in Sri Lanka. So it tells you the items, news, stories about the murders in Sri Lanka from history to right now. But you are an investigator and you want to find it out some information only between 2000 and 2005, some, some purpose. So then you can limit the search to this period using after and before. So for example, if you type murder in Sri Lanka after colon 2000 and before colon 2005, it gives you the results about murders in Sri Lanka in between that period published on the web. Isn't it important? Right. Let's say you, are, you want to gather some intelligence about National ID numbers in Sri Lanka. You just can start with typing NIC. So national ID card number, NIC. You type NIC, there might be a lot of garbage. NIC is all over the world. You don't want that. Maybe you want some documents which publish the NICs. So since most of the documents published over the internet using PDF, Format. So you would like to refer, um, you would like to limit your search to the PDFs. So then you type file type colon PDF and nice. So then at my, it might produce all the results which appears the keyword in IC in the PDF documents from all over the world. But you want that maybe only from the Sri Lankan websites. So then what you should do, you add site colon star dot LK. So in the site operator, limit the search to Sri Lanka. So this will 
produce the result of the documents which has NIC numbers published on the web. I'll show you those queries in my second video so you may get, you might really get upset because your NIC might also public document. Anyone can know that. By looking at the NIC, you can maybe find out your address, phone number, and where you live. So that's how OSINT works. So not only OSINT cases, Google AdWords operators use for used by ethical hackers and pen, pen, pen testers as well. So they use to find sensitive information over the internet using those advanced search terms. So if you try to do so, it's call it as Google Docs or in the first name it was called as Google Hacking and then later it's not really hack the Google. So, so if Google Hacking, when you say Google Hacking, some people think People try to hack the Google, it's not so. Actually, Google provides some operators. People can use those operators to retrieve confidential or sensitive information. So if such people try to do that, it's called it as now Google Docs. Docs. So such Google Docs or in such queries, sample queries, available in the Google hacking database or GD. So you can visit it, expolitedb.com. It has a lot of expolit data available. So if you are ethical hacker or pen tester, so from there you can go to Google hacking database which show you some sample queries or the advanced query strings which you can put it into the Google to retrieve confidential information. So I will pick a few of them to show you the importance of those. For example, let's say you want to find it out. Some people, phone number, addresses, emails. So most of the people publish those information in their curriculum details. So those, when they publish those curriculum details or the CVs, title is the same. So I build a query, so entitled, this query entitled curriculum vitae will return all the curriculum vitae. So if you want to find it out, the curriculum vitae which has phone and anything, address with anything and email, so you can run this query. So in case you want to limit that to Sri Lanka, so you say site all in Sri Lanka. Similarly, if you are interested to find it out pages, which can log in, or which has some login information. So you can search using in-tax operator. So you say, I would like to search uh, pages which has username, or user, or email, or sign on, or login, or all. And then you can put brackets and then prioritize it as well. So it returns the pages which has those keywords in only the body, not in the URL of the titles. These words should appear on the body. If you pass that query, it returns such documents. In case you want to exclude some pages from some websites, like maybe if you don't want uh, the scripts. So you say minus stack overflow. So then it returns the pages, not from the stack overflow, from the rest of the documents. As you may aware, 
sometimes the log files reveal confidential data because we pay less attention to the logs. So if some error occurs, we put everything into the log file. So this everything might be some usernames and the passwords. So if you are interested on such, so you can run a query like all in text, all the username and the password. So that means I'm searching documents which has username and password both. Type of the document I'm searching for is log files, L-O-G files, log files. So it might return a lot of logs. Similarly, so database passwords usually store in the environment files. By mistake, some of you might put those environment files also under the root and Google eventually index those. So if you are interested in such, so you search file type env environment and then a phrase database and this for password, it returns, it returns. Environment files index over the world with database underscore passwords. So you can find some passwords to log in someone else's databases because they have put that into the public by mistake and Google index them. Now you search them. So such search query is what we call it as Google Docs. Google can use to do an image search as well. You may try that already. So it has some advanced parameters available. So for example, you can search for faces, you can search for size, and you can search for regions like that. So in this sample, I'm searching for image called Hasun Disoisa, that's me, in any size of image, in any ratios with any color, but only the face and region Sri Lanka. So that really hits my photos published by various people, not only me. So like that, you can search yourself and see whether how, many, how much information about yourself is publicly available. That not because of you, maybe because of your friends. So they have published about you. They have published about your information. Some of them are confidential data. You can write yourself about your name and see whether, what are they? Similarly, Google provide search images using similar images. So if you have some photos and you don't know who it is, the name of that, so you do just upload that photo and search. You might find his name in the Google image search. You can search by image, not only by text. So that is important in the OSINT, right? Okay. That's all about Google. So how about Yandex? Yandex is a popular company now getting popular on the searching domain, especially in the Russian continent, or the Scan Russia, European continent. So it almost provides all the operators like Google, but their ranking is different. Because of that, what we get it from the Google search is different but you get it from the index search. So if you are awesome person, so better you search for two. So you might get useful results from Yandex than Google. Yandex also has plus parameter N and then two N signs for N. Plus parameter can use for primary keywords. They, we can define the primary keywords with plus, so that put more weight than in the index. 
to emphasize science will use and instead of capital N in Google, to emphasize sign in the index. To tilde sign is not, that is minus in Google. So both Google and Yandex use double quotes to the phrases and then star for the missing keywords. So the double quotes star is the same meaning in the index as well. But if you need N, Google, you have to type capital N. So in the index, you type the two ampersands. If you want to exclude something in the Google, you should type minus. But in the index, you should type two tail designs. Right? There are slight differences. So when you compare the other operators, Yandex also supports site. And in the after and before, instead of that, Yandex has a date. And then in title, Google in title, in the Yandex just say title. So whatever Google gives you, Yandex also gives. But their operator is not always the same like Google, but they have some operator which match to Google. Right. So these are the public search engines. So in addition to that, there are some public tools built by people to search for specific content. So for example, so let's say you are interested in emails and you search only, your search is specific to find it out email address and maybe IP addresses of the dom such domains and so on. So one important tool available for the OSINT community for that is the Harvester. It's a simple command line tool. So you search for the Harvester and install that, and then you can run such query, the Harvester minus the domain name minus L500 and minus P Google. Minus P operator tells you which search engine you want to search email addresses. Minus L tells you how many search results you should get it to get the emails. And minus D tells the domain you want to search. So if you enter this command for the harvester, it tells me or it gives me the email address which found in the cmbac.lk domain website about cmb.ac.lk websites from the Google. Email addresses in this particular domain index in the Google will return by this harvester. There are some tools built on top of these search engines to search for specific things. So as you see, this is quite interesting area, searching in the surface web. So I come to the sessions with this. So the next session, in this lecture, I will produce a demonstration video. So I'll demonstrate what we discuss here in, the, in my next video. Thank you for listening so far.